Hey guys, Julian Lalo here, and in this video, I'm gonna take you through a few of the less common Lightroom techniques to give your portrait and fashion photography that extra edge. So the first of these techniques is to ensure that you start off with a balanced image. And what I mean by that is to ensure that the image is balanced from either left to right or top to bottom in terms of its exposure and white balance before you start your edit. So I'm gonna jump straight into Lightroom and I'm gonna use this photo of model Caitlin here. Now I have made another video where I have edited this image of Caitlin from start to finish, but it's a really great example of balancing your image before you start. So you can see here that Caitlin is sitting in front of a pier and that the light source is the sun and it is coming over her back shoulder. So you can see that the top half of the image is a little bit brighter and a little bit warmer than the bottom half of the image. So what I'm gonna do is before I start editing the image, I'm gonna grab the linear gradient tool and I'm gonna drag it up from the bottom to around the point where the exposure starts going from dark to bright. And I'm just gonna brighten up the bottom half of the image until it gets to a point where it is nicely balanced in terms of exposure. Now you can see that it is also a little bit cooler in the bottom, bottom half as it doesn't have that sun which is warming it up. So I'm also going to increase the warmth of the image just a fraction. So you can see here the before and the after, and you can see that we're now starting to edit an image going forward that is nicely balanced from top to bottom. Jumping straight into the next technique, and that is one that is based around sharpening. Now to me, when working on a portrait or fashion image, it's really important that a few aspects of the photo are really sharp. That is one, the eyes, the lips, the hair, and if it is a fashion photography image, the garment in itself. Any details on the clothing are really nice and sharp. So there are a couple of methods we're gonna look at uh, with this image of Caitlin in terms of sharpening. The first being using the sharpening slider. Now, most of you have probably used this slider before, but what you may have noticed is if you just slide the sharpening slider across, it is gonna sharpen the entire image, which can bring a lot of grain into the image. It's sharpening areas such as the background that you don't necessarily want sharpened, leading to extra grain in the image. So something that I found in my previous videos that a lot of people mention down in the comments is my use of the masking slider. So below the sharpening slider, if you hold down option on your keyboard, slide across the masking slider, you'll be able to see the details in which are going to be sharpened by the sharpening slider. So as we slide further across, you can see that the background details are disappearing and what's left is the outline of the model, her hair, her eyes, her lips. So we'll slide this across to around here and then use the sharpening slider to just sharpen those areas that were highlighted white. Now we'll reset this and I can show you a second way of doing some local sharpening. So just before showing you this second sharpening technique, I will mention that you may have seen me click my clean grain preset from my fashion presets pack, just so that we started off with a little bit of a nice edit on the photo before showing you these techniques. So jumping straight into the second sharpening method, and that is to use the brush to do some local sharpening. So essentially click the brush tool, come down to the panel here on the right hand side, increase the sharpening, and then we can just simply brush over the eyes, the lips, the hair, the bikini top, any details in the image that you want sharpened, again, without creating that extra grain anywhere else in the image. Moving on to the next tip and sticking with the brush tool, we're gonna to have a look at the eyes. The eyes are something that can really make a big difference in the overall edit, specifically when you're talking about a portrait image. Now, as a rule of thumb, when taking a portrait, you wanna focus on the eye. That is a general rule of thumb when taking the photo. And now when it comes to the editing, you wanna emphasize that beautiful sharp eye even more by using the brush, clicking down on iris enhance and brushing in the irises on the image. Now it's really important when you're using the Lightroom presets on any brush tool that you understand how they're working. And in terms of the Irons Enhance tool, it increases the exposure, the clarity, and the saturation. So 
I usually zoom in to brush it in to make sure I get it in the right position. And then I zoom out to see how it looks with the overall image. Sometimes the Lightroom preset can be a little bit overdone and make it look a little bit too fake. And that's where I like to just adjust a little bit more. I'll decrease saturation if needed or sometimes the exposure. Sometimes you also need to go the opposite way and increase. So that really depends on a photo to photo basis. So moving on to my next tip, and that is to focus on the hair. Now I'm sure a lot of you have heard of or used before dodging and burning, but probably most of you have used it in relation to the skin. Dodging being where you lighten an area and burning being where you darken an area. Well, I like to use this technique with the hair to really enhance a portrait or fashion photo. So I grab the brush, I start with dodge, and what I do is I just go around the hairline and dodge it in a little bit. I also cover the hairline to darken that a little bit more. That just helps give the face a nice outline and take the eye away from a lighter area in the hair, such as a part in the hair. I then create a new brush, go to dodge, and just go over all the natural highlights in the hair. So you can see that I'm using a different image here because it just really shows this technique nicely. You can see that Pamela has really nice black hair and the highlights are already quite prominent. But when you go over them a little bit more, it just really makes the hair pop and gives it a beautiful shimmer. So if I turn the dodge brush off and back on, you can see the difference that it's made to this image. Like I said, these are techniques that just give you that little bit of edge, that little 1% of edge on a beautiful edit that you're already doing. The final tip that I'm gonna run through with you guys is to draw the viewer's eye to the subject. Now this can be done in a number of ways and I'm gonna go through all of them across two different image. The first of which is to clean up the image. Take away any distractions. So I'm gonna use this photo that I shot here in the sand dunes in Abu Dhabi. I'm gonna throw one of my presets onto it first so we start with a nice image and I'm gonna go ahead and this can also be done in Photoshop, but for the sake of this video, we're talking about Lightroom. So I'm gonna use the clone healing tool and I'm gonna go and take away all the footprints in the sand, the sticks, this little bit of grass that's growing, and I'm just gonna go through and clean it up. This is just gonna take away any distractions like I mentioned and really draw the eye in to the subject. So now that I've gone ahead and done that, I'm gonna hit before and after. So you can see here how it just takes away any other distractions, takes away any distractions that your eye may have been drawn to and really brings you to that focal point of the subject. Sticking with this image, I'm gonna go on to another technique to draw the eye in and that is to use a radial filter. So I'm gonna go ahead and click radial filter. I'm gonna trace it over our subject here in the middle of the image. You can see that I like to use a nice feather on the filter so it gradually fades out. And from here, all the changes and adjustments that I make are gonna be happening on this red highlighted area. So I'm just gonna play around a little bit with the exposure, with the shadows, highlights, and a little bit with the contrast and clarity until I can make the model pop and stand out even more. So you can see here, when I turn off the filter, and when I turn it back on. So you can see the difference that makes. Again, we're just drawing the eye in again to that subject. For the last technique, I'm gonna show you on how to draw the eye in to the subject. I'm going to again be using a linear filter. So I'm gonna switch images for this one. I'm gonna use this image of Taylor that I shot in my studio. I'm gonna throw a preset on it from my fashion pack. I think this one looks pretty good. And I'm gonna use two filters to draw the eye in. I'm gonna go one from the left-hand side of the image and I'm gonna just darken that a little bit, drop the exposure a little bit. So you can see already, it's looking really nice. It draws the eye from left to right already by just by darkening the left-hand side of the image. Make sure that the darkening falls off before it gets to the model so that you're not darkening her features. And then I'm gonna draw one in from the right hand side and brighten that off a little bit. So you can see now that the image has a really nice flow from left to right and the model is popping right in the middle of it. It's really important when using these filters to keep an eye on where the natural light is coming from. 
it would look really odd if the viewer can see that the light is coming in from the left hand side but you have heavy shadows on the right hand side and vice versa. So keep an eye on where the natural light is falling and use your filters to follow and accentuate that to draw your eye into the middle and into the model. So that's it. They're my tips. They're my little one percenters just to give your portrait and fashion photography that little bit of edge. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a little something out of it. If you did, please help me out with a like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for pressing play.